In the hills above the town of Greenock in Scotland, there lies a body of water that played a vital role in the town's history. Today, it supplies the town and surrounding area with drinking water, but in the past, it was the powerhouse of the local industrial revolution. Loch Tom is not a natural loch. It is in fact man-made. Greenock's original water supply was designed by and its construction was overseen by James Watt, who was notable for his advancements in the field of steam engines. His water scheme was completed in 1773. James Watt's system used a small reservoir above Greenock near the Wynn Hill. The water was transported via wooden pipes to the well park where there was a cistern. From there, it was distributed throughout the town. Towards the end of the 18th century, Greenock was a rapidly growing town and because of the increase in industry, there was also increased demand for water power. Due to the local geography, there were a number of fast flowing streams that were able to be used to power small mills and industry. But it became apparent that this was not suitable. During the summer months, the flow of water was extremely unreliable. James Watt was asked about the possibility of creating a new reservoir to improve the availability of water. The area in question was a depression in the landscape that already contained a small body of water. James Watt deemed the proposal impractical due to the route the water would need to take as it traversed the hillside towards the town. The same proposal was put to Robert Tom, a hydraulic engineer from the Isle of Butte. He accepted the proposal and constructed what would later become known as the Greenock Waterworks. He had previously demonstrated how to harness the power of water at his cotton mill on the Isle of Butte. He had devised a network of reservoirs and cuts to store and regulate water to provide power. Robert Tom, along with Sir Michael Shaw Stewart, founded the Shaw Water Joint Stock Company in June 1825 with a capital of £31,000. The project involved the creating of a large reservoir known as the Great Reservoir. It's compensation dam and aqueduct to channel the water towards the town. This aqueduct would become known as the Greenock Cut. The project was completed in 1827. The Greenock Reservoir would later become known as Loch Tom in honour of its engineer. When researching Loch Tom, we often see reference to the Shaw Water. Many sources refer to this as a stream or burn that ran close to the north shore of the loch. What happened to this lost waterway? A clue was found in an old book called the Penny Cyclopedia, the home of the country included in the basin of the Clyde, the estuary in which washed a large portion of the border but the contributories which drain it are small and, with one exception, useless for the purpose of navigation. A stream which bears, in different parts of its course, the name of Rotten Burn. Shaw's Burn and Kipwater drains the western part and joins the estuary of the Clyde. This means that Rotten Burn that currently flows into Loch Tom from the south and Kip Water that currently flows from the Compensation Dam to the River Clyde were once joined by Shaw Burn. The entire waterway was the Shaw Water. 
This old map shows the path the burn took before Loch Tom was constructed. This means that the Shaw water still exists but is currently below the water of the loch. The Kip water is the continuation of the Shaw water. It still flows its natural course as it would have before the loch was constructed. It hugs the landscape of Loch Tom down through the valley and into the River Clyde at Inverkip. During a period of very low water, the banks of the former Shaw water be- became visible. This is a very rare glimpse into the distant past. It also gives the opportunity to imagine what the Shaw waters would have once looked like. If you look at the north side of the Compensation Dam, we can see that a small section of the Shaw's water survives to this day. The reason for the low water level was to allow for maintenance to be carried out on the loch's largest dam. The water is probably at the lowest level it's been since its construction. It is unlikely it will ever be this low within our lifetimes. There is a belief that the Shaw Water was named after the Shaw family who were local landowners. It's more likely that the name was derived from the local farm known as Shaw's. It remains are still evident on the north bank of the loch. There are also other farms and their remains dotted around the landscape. As waters flow into the Loch Tom, it was designed not to exceed a certain level. As the water levels rise, it passes over a spillway into the Compensation Dam. The Compensation Dam was also designed to self-regulate. As the water level rises, it's able to flow into the Kip water. The Compensation Dam also marks the starting point of Greenock Cut through the first sluice. The cut follows the meandering route around the landscape. The aqueduct is 6.5 kilometres long and reaches Greenock in the Overton area. The cut was also designed to self-regulate, as well as a manual sluice to open and close the flow of water. Robert Tom invented and installed self-regulating sluices. When the water level reaches a certain depth, it passes through a pipe. It then filled a bucket, adding weight. 
The weight of the bucket pulled a lever to open the sluice and to allow the water to drain into an overspill. When the water got back into its correct level, the flow of water through the pipe would stop and the water would drain out of the bucket through a hole. This would allow the sluice to close. A simple yet ingenious idea. Along the cut, we can still see the remains of buildings and structures that provided shelter for the workers who were responsible for managing and maintaining the aqueduct through its use. Before the water was released, it was once again collected in the compensation dam called the Long Dam. The flow of water could be controlled to deliver a consistent amount of water during the scheme's operating hours. The water could be released into the sequence of falls and the energy would be harnessed at many points along its journey. The first in line to receive water power from the Shaw's waterworks was the paper mill located directly below the Long Dam. As it travelled downhill, it provided power for other mills, rope works, distilleries and various other industries. Within the town, you can still see traces of Shaw Waterworks from its aqueducts and tunnels to ponds and reservoirs that were built to regulate the supply. As demand increased, additional work was carried out to ensure the water supply remained adequate. This included the construction of the Kelly Dam, the Kelly Cut, second aqueduct that transport water from the Kelly Dam to Loch Tom Compensation Dam. The water level of the main lock was also increased by raising the embankment in the 1870s. This not only altered the water level, it also subsequently created an island within the lock known as Birdie Island. If we look at older maps, we can clearly see the island is just an outcrop of the mainland. Today, it's an island with no land link. The area consumed by the lock was also increased when the water level rose. When you look at old maps, you can see that in one area. The original road had been lost and a new road has been built. Low water levels have once again allowed us to glimpse into the past. We are again able to see what remains of the original route that people would use to travel through the area. We do not have an exact date for this road, but it was probably in existence before the loch was constructed. Other roads in the immediate vicinity give us an idea of how it may have looked. Today, the reservoir is used to supply the town of Greenock and the surrounding areas with drinking water. In the 1970s, a tunnel was blasted through the hillside to a new water treatment plant located close to the site of the Long Dam. Loch Tom stands as a lasting testament to what can be done when engineers set out to solve a problem. What started as an idea is now a local landmark. <laughs> 